Hello everyone, John Snedeker here with Notary Signing Agent Blueprint. Welcome to another episode of Signing Agent Secrets. Before we get started, go ahead and comment in where you're tuning in from. Uh, today we have the wonderful Anna Marie Robertone. Uh, she's with ATR Notary Services LLC out there in Penn Argyle, Pennsylvania. Um, Anna Marie is a brand new signing agent. However, she's been a notary for almost 30 years. Uh, Anna Marie, thank you so much for being here, my friend. Fighting me. You got it. So let's uh, take me back just a little bit. Can you tell me a little bit about your story before loan signings? Um, what were you doing before you even found out this was even a thing or a career for you? Well, uh, to backtrack, I became a notary out of necessity. I was the president of our local ambulance corps, and every time we needed something notarized, we would have to call up the uh, lawyer's office, and we would have to go down, and I guess it had gotten to the point where the uh, office staff had said, this is ridiculous, you know, if he's not there, if he's in court, so on and so forth. So Yeah, it happens a lot. Right. When you need it, you need it, and you need it now. <laughs> right, right. But, uh, but in Pennsylvania at the time, in 1990, they uh, it was long and arduous. Uh, I actually had to contact a local state representative. Mm -hmm. He had to um, recommend me to the local state senator. Okay. Who had to present my qualifications to the Pennsylvania State Senate. And then they did the background check and such. So to become a notary, you're saying for to right. go through all that? Wow. Okay. A little bit of red tape, right? right. Yeah. <laughs> definitely changed now. Uh, you know, when I see that you can do it all online. And yeah. You can be done fairly quickly. Easier but, now um, than ever, you know. Right. Right. So I actually, um, I was a school teacher at the time, so uh, that's what was my full time job, and. Um, I never really did a whole lot with the notary, but you know it was very convenient for the ambulance corps. Uh, most recently, the last twenty, almost twenty years, I have been in pharmaceutical sales. Okay, gotcha. Another good business. I've done some closings for some people that do that, and boy, do they do well. <laughs> um, that's awesome. So you found you got through the red tape. You became a notary uh, almost thirty years. So was there any particular sort of aha moment for yourself that you you, you you found out about loan signing somewhere. Was there any particular moment that you're like, you know what, I actually kind of really want to pursue this. Anything stick out to mind at all? Uh, absolutely. So through the years, I, I notarized things for friends, for sure. relatives, that type of thing, and never really did much with it. But recently, um, at the end of July, to be exact, I got a phone call from a local school district. Mm -hmm. and uh, I had forgotten that I had listed myself through PAN, the Pennsylvania Association. Yep, heard of them, right. And we talked about them, yeah. Right, that uh, I was a mobile notary. So the school district called me, and they asked if I would do some notary work. And uh, they asked me what my clerical cost was. And, I yep. was, and I'm thinking to myself, uh, okay, I, I have to think about this. So I, I said, can, you, can I call you back? And I actually called um, my cousin, who's a notary. He's he's a new notary, and we went back and forth. And I said, "Geez, you know, because I've always done it basically just for friends, and I only charge Pennsylvania says it's five dollars per stamp." Right, guys. There's state laws you got to adhere to with general notary work for sure. That's smart that you know that. All some people don't. <laughs> right. So anyway, I came up with a clerical cost, and I presented it to them plus the five dollars per stamp. They didn't bat an eye. Yep. And I said, uh, when it was all said and done, I said, wait a minute, this could be pretty lucrative. There you go, Anna Marie. And tell you, you guys, if you're watching right now, let me tell you something. A good business to be in is one that they are required to use you. They cannot notarize their own signature. Um, and obviously, we do loan signing fees, but even for general notary work, guess what, guys? They can't stamp their own signature. You really, um, I'm, I'm not sure if all the laws say this, but I know in here in Florida, you can't notarize for your spouse or, or certain close relatives anyway. And so when they don't bet an eye, it's because they, they uh, if they don't have a lot of options out there, um, a good business to be in is one where they're required to use you or, or someone of you know that kind of stature as a notary. And so they found you through um, your profiles, where to being out there. And that's fantastic. So you put yourself out there, they found you, 
didn't bat an eye and then that's where your spark happened when it was like you know what this could be really pretty good it's a very flexible gig and i'm really glad that you sort of found out about it um so are you still doing the pharmaceutical sales or are you a full-time signing agent part-time signing agent can you maybe just sort of walk me through where you are and sort of how you're integrating that into your schedule um if at all um so far well uh, it, i'm starting out part-time with the hopes of becoming full-time because in the next couple of years, my mortgage will be paid off. And Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And so I had said to myself a couple of years ago, five years ago to be exact, when I retire, I, I can't just sit down and do nothing. And now that I've found that I really should have been doing more with the notary, I thought let's develop this part-time now and Smart. then, it will turn into something more along full time and of course having gone through your course I know that you know I got really good control over my schedule and then we can just go from there that's awesome um, Anna Marie before I did signings I was a loan officer I was actually a personal well, loan officer and personal banker but on the, uh, the banking side people used to come in uh, you know elderly folks in their 80s 90s and they'd say um, once you sit in the chair, you're always going to sit in the chair, you know what I mean? And they just wanted to stay active and be busy. And so that's um, fantastic. So the whole um, way that you're integrating it is smart, though, with the, the part time. It's very important to start part time because you don't put pressure on yourself when you do it that way. You say, OK, what's out there? Let me develop this. And it takes a little bit of time. But when you link up with the right companies, like the floodgates open you know it's end of the month we're on the uh, september 25th year on the film date but um it is one of the busiest days of the month for loan signings and um you know at the end of the day when you start part-time you give yourself a better chance to be successful because if you can't do it part-time how will or, how are you ever going to do it full-time you know that's my take on it if you can't get it off the ground part-time it's it's going to be a lot harder to do it full time because you're going to have more time. You're not going to know how to do it. But if you can do it in a smaller time window, that's proof that you are able to make it happen kind of thing. And so that's fantastic. Um, and do you have any maybe time goal? Do you have any? And it's okay if you don't, but are there any particular goals of a, a time frame to be full time or not so much? Uh, well, if it, um, you know, if it happens by the end of this year or maybe uh, into the first part of next year, then I would definitely do this full time. And I would say so long to pharmaceuticals, because then again, I'm the master of my own, uh, my own schedule. Your schedule, yeah. Yeah, that's a big deal. Um, it's, a, it's a big deal for anything in really entrepreneurship. Um, or running a small business, you know, everyone's got to be somewhere at some point, but running your own schedule is just a huge deal. It's not just the ability to do it. It's, it's why are you doing it? And some people are taking care of kids and some people want to, you know, are juggling two, three jobs that want to do that. And if they could, you know, reduce the number of jobs they have, or if they can, you know, there's always a, a reason why people want to own their own schedule. Um, and uh, some people have just been working in corporate for 40 years or 30 years or, or maybe 10 years and say, I don't want another 30, 30 years in this. <laughs> so there's always sort of a different reason why, but that's fantastic. You've worked in the sales. You've obviously um, done some right things to be able to pay off your mortgage uh, in the near future, which is a really fantastic milestone. Um, and, and that's great. I think I, I asked this question about, you know, how soon to be full time to uh, someone last week. And. I don't think there's really a, a number of months that's sort of like a benchmark. It really just depends on the knowledge you have, how you apply it, who you sign up with. You can sign up with five companies or you can sign up with 50 companies. It's really up to you. Um, and, and so I don't think there's really a right or wrong as far as a time frame, but I think having those goals will just help you sort of keep yourself in check to get where you want to go. Um, and I think very reasonable, very realistic uh, could be, you know, three four months I, I don't think that's out of the question at all it really just depends on what you do with your time um, to, to sort of get there um, now you've been a notary for 30 years almost 30 years um, you you've done some trainings you've, you've found out um, sort of what's out there for loan signings Anna Marie do you think that this is a job that anybody can do or do you think there's sort of this you know wall of requirements before you can be a loan signing agent and what's your take on that no, I think that I think that anybody could be a notary, but I think there are certain things that have to be in place. One, you have to have good people skills. 
So, you know, if you can't make eye contact and you don't have a smile on your face, it's going to be tough for people to have any confidence. Of course, you got to have morals and scruples and you have to know how to conduct yourself. I, I think that is, um, I think that's an important part because as you know, what we notarize is important. And Permanent. Trust <laughs> right. And they tell <laughs> that one, we know what we're doing and two, that we'll do no harm. Right. So I, I, uh, I think anybody that can, can do it, but uh, I think in addition, those things that I just mentioned will, uh, will make it even better and, and more attractive. And therefore you get a greater chance of somebody saying, Hey, he or she did a really nice job. I'd go back. Right. Repeat business. Yeah. Keep that, keep the calls coming in, you know, and even if someone, um, you know, I get a lot of calls of people that are fearful, maybe a little bit intimidated. Um, even if you don't feel you're exactly what you need to be to start, um, right. it doesn't take long to learn some of these very basic skills of, you know, getting out of your comfort zone, learning to smile, being professional, um, handing out business cards, putting your profile online. You got calls from putting yourself out there. Right. Some people are shy and that's okay, but it doesn't take much to just take that first step and say, what's the worst that could happen? I'll put my profile out there. You get some calls or you don't get any calls. You're, you're, right. you're not getting calls right now. It's only going to open up the, the opportunities for you by sort of getting out of your shell. Um, and I get this call a lot from signing agents and notaries that just can't really seem to pull it together. They're really not sure what the next steps are. These are not very difficult things to learn, even if you are not sure. And you're not in that category, but a lot of people are. And, and that's, why we ask this question because I'm, I'm sort of on both sides of the fence. You know, it's, it's a signing agent, you know, you're really just, it's not heavy lifting. It's sign and date, you know, collect signatures. If there's any questions that you can't answer, you know, get somebody on the phone that can answer. It's not very, uh, very hard job, but if you want to be more successful, sure. That discipline, professionalism, getting repeat business definitely goes a long way in this, you know, in the loan signing industry. Um, so you're, you're, you're doing what you can to pivot, Anna Marie, um, can you paint a picture of what success looks like to you with loan signings? Everybody's different, but is there maybe a perfect day or a certain number of closings that you're, you're striving for? Um, any particular thing that comes to mind when we talk about what success looks like to you um, since you are just getting started? Well, I, I would like to be able to do a minimum of two to three closings a day, and then that would be successful. I've already, um, you know, started playing with the math and, and figuring out the taxes and such. So I have a mm -hmm. amount in mind after taxes that I would like to see, see happen. And, it, and um, for me, it would be, you know, two to three, okay, more if, if uh, they're, they're available. If they're there. <laughs> That's right. right. <laughs> That's fantastic. That's a great goal. That's a very realistic, reasonable goal. Um, when you can hit that, you're going to be four to five, you know, and that's very doable as well. I, I have my um, custom, I have an, a custom Excel sheet in my business that um, it tallies up the average number of closings and it just has everything basically calculated for me once I kind of enter everything in. And I've looked back and I've definitely had some years where I average, you know, three, four signings a day. That's a lot of signings. Um, you know, yes, I did the most I did in one day was nine, but not every day is like that. And so when you look at a reasonable goal, like two to three, mm -hmm. you're going to be able to hit that depending on, you know, who you work for, what hours are available. But guys, it's smart. You do the math, you figure out what your goal is, whether it's a, a number of goal that you're looking for income wise, divide it by a hundred, divide it by 150, divide it by 75. That's going to tell you how many signings it takes to reach that goal. And then you look at your weekly schedule, not your daily schedule. There's sort of 20 business days, maybe 22 business days in the month and say, if I need to hit X number of closings, how many do I need per week to get that done? You know, and it's not, you know, one closing a day every day, it's sort of sporadic. And so you, it becomes realistic and reasonable when you can sort of work backwards from your uh, dollar amount goal or two to three a day is a, is a, a very specific goal regardless of the dollar amount, because you, you'll know that, you know, by the end of the week, you're looking at 10 to 15 signings. So if you do one day's got five and another day's got zero, you're still okay. You're just, you know, getting in 
um, getting them all taken care of throughout your week because you may not be available every single day to do loan signings. Life happens, but it's a very reasonable, realistic goal, and that's fantastic. And that'll help you sort of roll right into the next goal, which may be four to five. Um, but hitting that goal is also going to allow you to, um, to pivot to full time as well. A lot of people think, Anna Marie, that they're going to make the switch once they replace their income that they're getting now. It doesn't always need to be like that. If, if people had a very reasonable, realistic goals of, you know, what they need to make to pay their bills, they're like, oh, I can definitely hit that number. A lot of people don't get in the business because they want the higher number and they, they, they want to wait until they definitely get that higher number and they may never hit it. But if you start out with that smaller number, say, you know what? This is reasonable, realistic, and I can make a living with this to pivot. Boom, that's done, and I'm part-time. And now, once they do that, then they free up another six, seven, eight hours in their day to do more loan signings. And that's when people really start to hit the traction. So I love the goals. I love the specific time frame and the number of goals. Without goals, what can you hit, right? It's, it's right, just fantastic right. that you have it. Uh, which is really, really great to hear because people that start getting in this business, they just find out, hey, it's just paperwork, I can do it, but they don't really have any specific tangible direction that they want to go. And you already have that. You've already invested in yourself with training, which is fantastic. So you know what's possible to you um, and who to work for and things of that nature as well. That's fantastic. Um, do you have any advice for people that are a little bit nervous, a little bit fearful, Maybe they're waiting for that larger dollar amount like we talked about. Um, any advice for people that haven't gotten started yet at all? You're literally going through this right now, so it's not that scary. She's doing it, guys. Um, any advice or guidance for people that are still on the fence? <laughs> well, I have to say, uh, when I started investigating it and such, um, uh, your training came, came up. And I, I would tell everybody, start out with your training, because that Excel spreadsheet that you're talking about is excellent. You know, in my um, pharmaceutical life and in the company that I started, I have an Excel spreadsheet, but yours is head and shoulders above. I made, oh, wow. made everything really nice, I, you know, including that link, because that's the big thing. You don't want to be late with your taxes. So I would yeah. tell <laughs> Uncle well, Sam's waiting for everybody, right? <laughs> true. This is true. So I would tell everybody to, you know, check out your training. You that may be the first starting point. Uh, then to add to it, you got to have a good accountant. Uh, and I have a very good accountant. I uh, after I got done with your course, I spoke with him and he told me the do's and the don'ts. Uh, you have to be organized. You know, you have to, unless the business is already developed and it's going to, and it's being handed to you, you know, it's you that have to, has to make the decision that you're going to make it succeed. Right. So you have to, you have to be organized. You have to have an idea of what you want. And it doesn't take a lot. You know, you can write down on a piece of paper, the pros and the cons. And then if the, the pros outweigh the con and you realize you can do this, then it's just a matter of where do I want to start? Um, again, I go back to you have to be honest and you have to be organized. Um, review the paperwork beforehand so that you're not going in there and saying, oh, wait a minute, in this way I have a general idea. If questions come up, then you can say, okay, let's take a look at this page. And then as you repeatedly said through the training, you know, know what you can and cannot say so, sure. that, so that there are no problems. But if you're determined, go for it. You know, I, I, you don't want to wake up old one day and say you had a miserable life because there's no going back. Yeah. Sometimes you just have to grab the bull by the horns and say, I want this and I'm going to make it happen. Yeah, that's a perfect attitude. You know, when I started in this business, I was like 21 years old. Like I had no clue what I was doing. I mean, I had an idea, right? But I was like, you know, it takes a little bit of guts to say, you know what, I'm going to make this work. But at the end of the day, you're, you're taking, you're taking your destiny and your future into your own hands because you, anybody can be miserable at corporate for, you know, 30, 40, 50 years. Right. But right. You know, the ability to step out there on your own. And once you sort of get out here, it's really not as scary as, you know, things sort of seem scarier than they actually are. Um, and you brought up some great points too. I want to circle back to 
Uh, and we do appreciate the kind words. I never asked her to plug our program, but we always appreciate when people do. Let's go back to um, not the Excel sheet, but the accountant part. So a lot of people get in this business and they're, you know, it's just paperwork, make phenomenal money. And it is paperwork and you certainly can make great money, but it right. still is a business. There's a whole back end to this. And so with your, you know, wisdom and, and some of the jobs that you've had, you know, guys, even if you don't know anything about taxes, I'm going to share something with you guys. My first accountant is in jail. My second accountant passed away. My third accountant, um, something happened to them as well. Guys, I've had a bad stretch of accountants that really messed me up early on in my career with taxes. I didn't know what I was doing. It wasn't until I started screening accountants, just like I screen companies. A lot of people don't know what that is. You have to find and screen a good accountant. Call up 10 of them, ask them some thoughtful questions, figure out which ones actually care about you. Even if you don't know anything about taxes, you just have to find a good accountant. They're worth their weight in gold when you find a good one. They're worth their fee. Don't sit here and try to outsmart the accountants because it's not going to happen. If you're in, if you're thinking of doing signings or you're doing loan signings, go make 150 bucks a closing and go focus on that. Don't try to outsmart the accountants and do your own taxes. So you have the wisdom to Go get a good accountant, guys. Um, notorial income is not subject to self-employment tax. A lot of people don't know that. If we can help you save thousands on your taxes or hundreds on taxes, it all depends on which states. Anna Marie talks about Pennsylvania's $5 a stamp for the state law. Florida's 10 bucks. I think California's $15. Some states are still like a quarter, Anna Marie. <laughs> They're like a quarter per stamp. And so what you want to do is have an idea and sort of total this in your head. And we're not going to get into how it all works, but the idea is this is a business. And so you want to run it like a business. Um, take your future and destiny by the horns, make this a reality for yourself. And for the things that you don't know, you can lean on other people like accountants or other signing agents that have sort of been in the industry to um, sort of guide you through certain things. Um, and so other than that, there's a lot of businesses that take a lot of money to start up, Anna Marie. This is not an expensive business to start, guys. Becoming a notary in Florida, it's like 39 bucks. And then we need a bond, which is 40. So it's like 79 bucks. Get your background check for like 65 bucks. There are some things to get, but there are tons of businesses and franchises out there that you need, you know, 10, 20, 30, 50 grand. Um, do you have a ballpark idea of maybe how much it's cost you so far, Anna Marie, at all? Well, it's interesting you said that because doing this notary work for the school district, I, I sat down and I went, holy cow, I've recouped my cost for the maybe the last four or five um, you know, uh, reissuing renewal of my, of my notary. Mm -hmm. And that, that was one job. So in Pennsylvania to be belong to Pan, um, it's, it's it actually, it started out at about like $65 back then. But Inflation hit, right? <laughs> it definitely has hit Pennsylvania. Uh, <laughs> in March of this year. And yep. it, me, it cost me a, uh, Three, at least three hundred dollars. I think it was two, like two hundred and eighty nine dollars, maybe a little bit more. So, uh, but they did they did everything for me, and they sent me everything that I needed. But right, you know, you're absolutely correct. It doesn't take a lot of money to start this. Like I said, I've already recouped my costs of renewing my notary for the last couple times. Sure, and it's um, whatever that cost is. This business is look like the way that you said specifically how they didn't bat an eye at your, you know, at your B, whatever it is, guys, right. you just need to find a scenario. You need to put yourself in that scenario, put yourself out there to get those types of calls. She's talking about the general notary work from the schools. I talk about loan signings. It's all I've ever done. Um, and so what it costs you to what you get, you know, it cost me, I remember it cost me like 214 bucks uh, to sort of quote unquote get started before any equipment. That was made in like, you know, the first signing I did was like 150. I, I had a good connection. I made it back in like two hours. <laughs> okay, like two signings. And then the rest of the entire year is like just, you know, sort of gravy on top. And so it's like, it's a good business to be in for what it costs you. And, you know, everybody has their unique ability that, 
um, depending on what you put into this business is essentially what you get out of it. So when right. people take it serious, now whether you, anyone listening, if you're doing it part-time or full-time, you still need to treat it like a business. You still want to have an accountant. You still want to have a professional touch on your emails and voicemails um, to get that repeat business because that's a big deal in any business, but especially our, uh, our notary signing agent business. Um, did we miss anything, Anna Marie? Is there anything else that you wanted to go over at all? No, but I want to make a comment, and it's Let's um, do it. it talks about the I want to talk about the availability, making yourself available, and then again, you know, being courteous. So I actually, for work, I had gone to this exercise. There were a couple people from uh, uh, an assistant living facility. The young lady was a notary. She had decided that she was not going to renew it. So I said, I'll do your notary work. And uh, just yesterday, I got, well, Monday night, I got a phone call saying that my mother is at this residence and we need things notarized. And so we worked it out that they had a doctor's appointment that was going to be five miles from where I live. I said, I'll meet you in the parking lot at the doctor's office. That's it. Yep. I did the notary work in that. And I, I had to laugh because um, I got a big hug and a kiss from the sun. And I got a text message uh, thanking me last night. So I'm, I was like, all right. Very fulfilling. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, you know what? It, it, we do work and we do important work. Absolutely. And so how quick was that appointment? Right in the parking lot. I've done those too. I've done so. God, I've done kind of some signings in some pretty crazy places. But uh, I mean, God, it could have been a five minute signing for you or, or a five minute appointment too. It's not like it takes, you know, an hour and a half to just right. stamp in a document or two, right? Do you remember how long it took at all or no? Uh, well, it took, she's 95 years old. Okay. And, uh, but, uh, but sharp as a tack and her hand was steady. It, yeah. It took me less than five minutes and took her a little more to, you know, to print her name in the appropriate yeah. uh, places and stuff. But it was so convenient, you know, sure. she didn't have to get out of the car. She was right there so she could make her doctor's appointment. So, you know, sometimes going the extra mile pays off. Absolutely. Um, we had a gentleman, Stu, on the show that he's in Vegas, but he said, you know, great advice just go in a shopping mall and hand out your card to everybody you see. Everybody needs a notary. Go to all the businesses, hand out your card. Um, they will need you. They'll need you again. It just is a matter of time, essentially. And so that's really a great approach. And um, um, that's fantastic. It's a very fulfilling job, an easy job. Um, and that's, I'm glad that you found it and, and really look forward to seeing what the future holds for you as you, you know, transition out of pharmaceuticals into uh, a career that um, is more in your hands with those hours like you spoke to as well to create your own schedule which is fantastic um, other than that um, guys if you're watching right now be sure to like and share this video if you're looking to boost your confidence and income well, we do have an entirely free 90-minute training right on notary signing agent blueprint.com um, it'll talk about how I started without any time money or experience and here I am almost 10,000 loan signings later um, other than that, thank you for tuning in and we'll see you next time. Stay well.